apologize in advance. So, it's a joint work with Andre Chayou and Maria de Apesenza. And we're dealing with uh, collision search and we're motivated by applications in the symmetric crypto. So first, I give some details about the cryptographic context and then draw a brief state of the art of uh, quantum gradient search before presenting our uh, new algorithm. So where are we? Well, we're studying symmetric cryptography where we have uh, generic attacks which define uh, the ideal security of our surface. Um, and we also have this constant effort of cryptanalysis which increases uh, confidence in the primitives we use. However, I would rather focus on generic attacks. So no cryptanalysis for today. Um, these generic attacks that we apply are, for example, exhaustive search, um, birthday paradox, uh, collision finding, and so forth. Um, as mentioned in the title, we are studying the situation from the point of view of a quantum adversary. So someone who has access to a universal, a universal scalable quantum computer. So we already know that in the asymmetric setting, uh, RSA and ECC uh, can be broken by such a computer. Um, so that uh, yesterday, and this is why there is uh, much work going on about designing new primitives. Uh, in symmetric cryptography, the situation is a bit, mm, di is a bit different. Um, so we know that uh, Grover can uh, speed up a quadratic factor any kind of exhaustive search. So this gives uh, quantum generic attacks. But um, there has been less work on this topic. Happily, this is changing, as can be seen from this session. Um, so now we need to focus a bit more about what can be done uh, using quantum computers uh, in cryptanalysis, and what other generic attacks uh, could be uh, created. So, let's uh, focus on collision search using quantum algorithms. The problem we're studying is uh, the classical collision search problem. So we have, uh, let's say, black box quantum function, which is a hash function. Um, and we look for two elements having the same image. In, classical, uh, in the classical world, this is done in uh, 2 to the end of uh, 2. Uh, so the square root of, uh, the, of the domain uh, with a polynomial memory using polar flow method. Uh, we have a related problem, which is uh, multi-target pre-image search. So searching for the pre-image of one target among many. And this is, can be done uh, using exhaustive search. Um, and what can be done in the quantum setting? So, we have put out the rule there, okay? Um, if you want to apply robot algorithm to search for collisions, actually this uh, doesn't help. Um, the time complexity and the correlation complexity is 2 to the end of R2. Uh, but we have this algorithm uh, by Grassau and Tapp. Uh, which we saw earlier, uh, which gives you a query complexity to the n over 3, which is actually optimal. Um, but they didn't uh, precisely analyze the time and time complexity and qubits used, and we'll go back on this later. Because uh, contrary to the previous talk, we are much more interested in the time complexity and the number of qubits used um, in the circuit model. So we count the number of quantum gates that we apply and we count the number of qubits that our circuit is using. Uh, this seems to be a rather relevant uh, cost metric for cryptographers. So, we also have this last algorithm by Omenis, which was uh, actually created for the element distinctness problem. It works as well uh, with 2 to the end of 3 queries, qubits, and time. And it's optimal as well. So, in short, uh, the situation seems rather settled. Uh, the collision uh, lower bound has been reached. But uh, this, these available quantum algorithms have uh, a common uh, downside. It's that if we want to outperform the classical bound, we need more than a polynomial number of qubits. And actually, uh, having that many qubits could be as hard um, as having a large distributed quantum computer since uh, you can use qubits as well for storing uh, memory or for 
uh, computing. And this large quantum memory, we would like to reduce it, or even to get rid of it. Um, there was a challenge uh, asked by Glover and Rudolf for better time, uh, quantum time, quantum memory trade-offs for these problems. And this is what we're dealing with. So we are uh, restricting the number of qubits available to what seems to us a more reasonable quantum computer. So let's say a polynomial number of qubits. This is what Grover's algorithm used, actually. So uh, we have these limited resources. And we are uh, focusing more on the theoretical algorithm than on implementation details. So no uh, error correcting codes, for example, uh, only the circuit model. So this is uh, our result. So we have a new light here. Uh, we're able to improve on the classical 2 to the n over 2. Um, with uh, suboptimal number of queries, but using this polynomial number of qubits, so a very uh, small number of qubits. And uh, there is also uh, a small amount of uh, classical memory that I have to explain later, but I'm keeping it uh, there. So now let's see how to do it. Okay. Uh, first we need a tool, uh, Grover Search. Classical one. Um, so you, you have access to uh, an efficiently computable test function. So this is uh, an oracle that we tell you whether a state is good or bad. Uh, the k notation is for a quantum state, so basically k x represents the string x. And this oracle is implemented, since f is an efficient function, uh, as a quantum unitary that acts not only on states, but also on superpositions of states, since it's a linear operator. So we're looking for uh, an x so that f of x equals 1, so it's a good state. And we know that if there is only one solution among 2 to the n, uh, we get 1 in time 2 to the n over 2. So quadratic improvement of the classical one. And there are 2 to the t solutions, we get uh, the superposition of all of them in time 2 to the n minus t over 2. OK, so this is the first tool we need. Uh, Grover is used as a subroutine in Brassa by algorithm in 1988. Um, and this works in two steps. So we saw, we saw that area, actually. First, we need to perform uh, a number of arbitrary classical queries to the function h. And then we need to search for a collision on one of these queries. So the oracle for good states is there. Uh, he, he tells basically whether we found a collision. And the number of queries is uh, 2, to the n, 2 to the n over 3 for the initial list, so for the first step. And the second step, since we have 2 to the n over 3 solutions, we have the same number of queries. So everything is fine uh, from this point of view. But uh, what about implementing this oracle? <coughs> well, um, we need, uh, of course, uh, to query the function h in superposition. But h is, let's say, a hash function whose description is public. So we can query it. There well, is no problem in this first step. And then we need to uh, answer a query of the form, uh, does this element appear in the list? where this element is in superposition uh, because the function f is called as a quantum oracle. Uh, this is easy <coughs> if you have 2 to the n over 3 quantum memory, so qubits, to store the whole list because you're going to um, use a quantum RAM model, for example, and ask a superposition membership query uh, in, uh, in little time. But uh, if you haven't, because we restricted the number of qubits. If you haven't uh, any quantum data structure, um, this cannot be done. So how are we going to do it? Um, there is a way, but it's different. Um, actually, there is, all, there is always uh, this way you can do. You haven't any quantum data structure to hold the list. So we're going to 
uh, check against all elements in linear time in the size of the list sequentially. So I see if it's the first one or the second one and go all through the list uh, without holding any data in memory at one point. And this takes uh, much more time than before. And this uh, makes the costs much higher than before. So if you haven't uh, any quantum data structure, actually the cost of the Vasa Renan Taps algorithm uh, becomes much higher. Actually, it becomes even higher than the classical one. So it's uh, not helpful. Because each time we compute an iteration, we need to query this superposition to the list. Uh, and each time we query this, uh, we need to do the n over 3 computations to go all through the list. So we're going to improve on that. And uh, we need uh, two ideas to do this. Uh, the first one is to use a uh, distinguished points method. And the second one is to uh, adapt the size of the list. We don't need it to be 2 to the n over 3. In the end, we balance the cost and we hopefully obtain what I claimed earlier. So, let's take an arbitrary definition of distinguished points. So, all x's whose image starts with a prefix of zeros. Okay. Um, what we can do now is build a list of distinguished points only. And then, when we search, uh, search for a collision, but only among the distinguished points. So we are making the Grover, uh, transforming the Grover uh, subroutine into amplitude amplification, where we first have to build the search space, which is a space of distinguished points. And then, uh, at each iteration of Grover, uh, test membership to our list. So we also, have, we also have two steps here. First, building a list, and second, looking for a collision on this list. Well, um, now that we have done that, uh, we actually don't need the list to be of this size anymore. So let's drop the n over 3. Um, we take a list of distinguished points of the type we want. Uh, first, build the list. So we need at each, for each point to uh, grow the search. And then uh, we need to search for a collision on this list. So collision that will uh, of course happen on distinguished points, so we build the search space of distinguished points. Uh, we perform our sequential membership queries to the list and uh, we wrap this into amplitude amplification. So this is how it works and this is how we can summarize it uh, in a natural language. So now we need to uh, well, optimize those two parameters and uh, check that I'm not mistaken. Um, so here are, here are they. Um, we take a list of size, let's say, 2 to the n over 5, and a prefix of size 2 n over 5. So distinguished points will be points having a prefix of 2 n over 5 zeros, um, whose image has a prefix of 2 n over 5 zeros. And the whole time of this procedure, first step and second step, becomes 2 to the 2 n over 5. And the qubits that we use in this procedure uh, are polynomial number for the first step and the second step, not more than Grover's algorithm. And uh, there is something else coming, of course, because between the first step and the second step, we need to store uh, that list of distinguished points we are working with. And that list has size to the other five. So somewhere we need the classical buffer that holds uh, classical memory of size 2 to the n over 5 elements. Um, but 2 to the n over 5 is hopefully low for practical applications. There is also a way to <coughs> make uh, this algorithm run in parallel. So if you have not only one quantum processor but multiple uh, quantum processors, so if you take n equals 128, let's say, and we have a range where we can still outperform the classical polarization. Um, and this, uh, of course, um, has also a slightly better 
uh, parallelization overhead than Grover's algorithm, <coughs> which uh, parallelize is uh, not very well. Um, actually, uh, the reality problem of multi target pre image search can be attacked in the same way. So, here we gave uh, beforehand the list of targets, and we're looking for uh, the pre image of one of these targets. Actually, we look for some x such that h of x is in this list. So, what we need to do is only search among distinguished ones with the same method. So we take that uh, there is a cost of to the t to go through, through uh, the whole list of targets to select the distinguished points. And then uh, we perform the same search operation as before. Um, the lowest complexity achievable with this method, since we are counting this cost here, is 2 to the 3 and over 7. Okay, um, so now we know that uh, with a quantum computer, and only a random number of qubits, so a restricted quantum computer, we can search for a collision on hash functions uh, due to the 2 and over 5 and for pre image uh, in this uh, time. And uh, we can give uh, well concrete parameters for it. Uh, for example, if you have a n equals 160 bits, <coughs> um, classical collision search would take time to the 80. And uh, with this algorithm, what the time becomes to the uh, 64. And uh, there is uh, this classical list that needs to be stored anyway, but uh, it takes only like 100 gigabytes. Um, this is uh, very similar for multi target pre image search. Lots of applications in cryptography because we can think now to. Uh, multi-user setting, for example, where well, this is an instance of multi target pre image search. Um, where basically you encrypted the same message using uh, lots of uh, different keys, and you're looking for one of the keys. So uh, this is an instance of the same problem that you can attack uh, with this quantum algorithm. Um, yeah. So, what do we did? Uh, basically, we can not, we not know that uh, we can accelerate collision search in a quantum setting even with uh, a restricted quantum memory, so a polynomial quantum memory, as in Robert's algorithm. So the question is now, um, are we doomed uh, to stay at this uh, 2, n over, 2 n over 5 uh, exponent, or can we reach uh, the lower bound 2 to the n over 3? Uh, using perhaps more advanced techniques. Uh, we looked on quantum walks, but for example, quantum walks use uh, large amounts of quantum memory, so they weren't uh, of any help so far. We also plan at uh, using this algorithm as a building block uh, for more intricate quantum attacks, and perhaps also use similar methods to reduce quantum memory requirements for other types of attacks. Thank you.